Yeah, no, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Brilliant. If we could do a quick chat now, that'd be fantastic. And then I'd love to come and do a proper sort of in-depth thing with you and celebrate your life and career and obviously X Factor and all that stuff. So is that okay? We'll just do a quick. All right. Lovely. Here we go. Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favorite people and a lady who I love. She's got a voice in a million. She's a belter. She's a star from Leicestershire and she joins us on the phone now. Sam Bailey, how are you? You're currently on the M1 on your way to rehearsals. I am. I'm rehearsing because I've got my own show in the West End next month. So uh, I'm currently rehearsing for that. So I've got to go down to London because there's a few other people involved. So, uh, yeah, so I'm quite busy today. So, but um, it's all good. It's all for a good cause. So. Brilliant. Um, I'm coming to see you on Saturday night at uh, Elia. This is going to be a great show. Um, you're doing shows all over the country at various venues. I guess that's what you were born to do, really. Sing live, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've, I've always been into my music and always loved performing. So, um, to do something that I really enjoy doing is really genuine. Um, it's not something that I have to do to get paid for it. Um, I really enjoy doing it. And it's something that I can really enjoy doing. What's your life like now? I mean, is it 50% mum, 50% showbiz, or 90% mum? How are you balancing it? Um, well, I think when you, when you become a celebrity, in inverted commas, when, like, I've embraced it. I've kind of I've not changed at all. So it's almost like I can dip in and out of it. So when I'm at home, I'm in mummy mode, and I do the school run, and I do pack lunches in the morning, and I'm cleaning up after three children in my onesie and then I could be you know up in London doing you know a, a premiere or doing a photo shoot but I'm still me and I think that's probably why I've, I've got on so well with it because it's really difficult to adapt to the world of celebrity I still get really really starstruck like I act stupid in front of famous people I've come out I almost have to tell myself there's someone in my brain saying Stop talking, stop talking because you're going to embarrass And I do it even now, so I don't feel like a celebrity. I don't. I just, I'm just a mum that went in for a talent competition and won it, and that now I'm reaping the benefits from it. And I'm happy, I'm really, really happy. I've got to ask you about your health because the last time I think I saw you, I was doing warm up for loose women and you were on there. And I know you'd had that slight um, illness. Are you 100% better now? You, you'd had a thing where um, it affected your face and it literally came overnight, didn't it? Yeah, it's not, it's not the nicest thing in the world. I think Kerry Katona's other artist got it at the minute, George. Um, and he's been doing it in OK magazine, I'm sure he's in it. Um, he's got it also. Um, not very nice at all. It's probably the most horrific thing. It's not good. You never want to leave the house. And luckily, I had it over Halloween, so I just looked scary, and it was great going trick or treating with the kids. I just had this scary-looking face, um, and everyone, you know, saw the funny side of it. But before the, the, the end of it, when you've got Bell's palsy, you don't want to do anything because you you can't smile. Your face completely drops on one side. It's hard to eat. Um, get the most worst earache you've ever had in your life and I still get like um, a slight earache and a, an eye twitch on my left eye um, which is a, probably a sign that I need to start taking it easy so when I get that twitch it's like a stress thing so it's an alarm if you don't stop and calm down then you could you could potentially get it to come back wow um, James Martin, yeah. James Martin, 
Yes. <laughs> I had no hand eye coordination whatsoever because one side of my face was dumb. So that was really tough. But to go on it, and I've never watched that bit of footage because I can't physically look at it because I, I was in such a state on that particular day. But I thought, no, you know what? I'm going to go on. I'm not going to let it stop me. So, yeah, it's pretty tough. And I still get the occasional twinge in my ear thinking that it's going to come back. Do you think it was brought on by the reaction to winning X Factor and all of that stuff? Was it to do with the contract or what do you think brought it on? Do you think there was any pressure from the business, from the record company or management when you got pregnant? Because in one way, family-wise, it was the best decision, but professionally, it took you out of the game for a while. Do you think you pissed off a few people with that? Exactly. And I love that about you. And I think your fans did too. They respect the fact that you are a mother and that that comes first. The business won't be there forever. Your family will. Sorry, Sam, I lost you there. Don't worry. Here we go. But I think what the fans love about you the most is the fact that you're number one, a mother, and number two, a star. And you don't let those two things get confused because, you know, you'll always be a mother, but the show business will come and go as we've seen a million times. Yeah. Um, 
I, they, they capture on it everything that I've done, and I've worked really hard to get where I am now, and I'm currently writing my second, and my full second album, so, and it's all my stuff, it's all, there's no covers on it, which is what the record company wanted me to do, a um, covers album, which I went along with, you know, cause, and the album did well, it got to number one, which is great, so, so this time around, it's time to chance, to chance doing my own album and seeing how well that does. Well, you should be very proud. Do you realise how talented you are on a scale of 1 to 10? Do you realise how beautiful that voice is? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very, very self-critical. And I'll always say there's always room for improvement. So I've never, ever been one to say, oh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an amazing singer. I'm absolutely pleased me. I'm not, because there's always room for improvement. You have good days and bad days when you sing. But um, it's very rare that I'm out of key unless it's problem with the sound but I'll always nitpick at things and you know afterwards when I listen to it I'll go I wish I'd have done that better so you know it's, it's I like to see young talent coming through and I just want to take them under my wing and teach them you know that what I know I've been singing for 20 years and I've learned so much so much from it I really have I'm appreciative of every single person that's given me any advice along the way because I wouldn't be the singer I am today if I hadn't had those people. What's the most important thing about show business then? Is it having integrity and doing what you believe is right or is it having the right management or singing the right songs? What is the best bit of advice? Um, well, for, for any business going into the world of show business, good management is a great thing because you need to have the art. You can bring out a record by just downloading it onto, onto iTunes and it'll cost you 100 quid. But you don't need a record label, you just need great PR around you. Management company champions are absolutely brilliant. They are absolutely second to none. They really work their balls off to get me where I am at the minute. And I think another thing is going in and being yourself. I've seen so many people in the world of show business, inverted commas again, that are in it and it's like completely and utterly up their own backsides and I'm like whoa who made you the king who yeah. made what makes you different than me you know there's no difference in us whatsoever we all come from the same place and our poo all stinks the same so but I'm not as soon as you meet me from going on stage to walking down a high street to being any I'm completely the same and another thing is I get so shocked when you go to a venue and you're doing a gig somewhere and there's a rider. So a rider is basically a list of things and demands that you want in your dressing room and the venue or whoever's booked you has to get those things in. And I've seen so many people's riders, it's like three sheets of paper of things that they want, pot noodles, champagne, all these different things, candles, cushions and blankets and sweets yellow M&Ms and stuff like that. Me, a kettle and some tea bags, which I provide myself. I always <laughs> take my own. There's no point in doing that because at the end of the day, when you go back, they're going to go, actually, we won't book that one again because it's cost us 300 quid on the rider and they would have bit up themselves when they turned up. If you've got respect for people, you'll gain respect back. So you've got a job to do. You go there, you sing, you make people happy and you go home. You don't go there, get absolutely wasted and eat all the food and then go on and have a really crap gig and then go home after that because you'll never go back. It's all, I think one major thing about in the world of show business is having respect for people and that's one thing that I've always got. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm from Nottingham. I think we've got the same thing in common. When you work the clubs around here, you know, you won't get away with it. There's no room for a big head, is there? Bailey and you know even my kids do 
you know, like they'll, they'll come up to me and say, you know, mommy, you're so amazing. Like my, my son's like, I love you so much. And then he goes, are you Sam Bailey or are you Sam Pearson? And I'm like, I'm, I'm Sam, I'm mummy to you. And he's like, oh, because sometimes I forget, you know, that I'm a married woman and I'm actually Mrs. Pearson. I'm not Sam Bailey. My Sam yeah. Bailey was my name before I got married. And, you know, it's just so nice when people come up to me and go, oh my God, you know, you, you're amazing. I voted for you. And I always say, right, <laughs> here's your 25 feedback. And they always laugh it off. Does it slightly piss you off that the professionals are being asked to audition for these shows now and they're pretending that they've uh, never done it before? That seems to be a theme that's on Britain's Got Talent and X Factor at the moment. And it is disingenuous because it puts real people at a disadvantage, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, of course it does. A lot of people get hunted in, hunted for the show. But I actually prefer the show this year because I want to see more women than men in the show. I want to see so watching the show this year it has been, oh my God, that person's really good. And then the next person comes on, it's, oh my God, that person's really good as well. And oh my God, that person's really good. And it's not like, you know, a few years ago, you know, someone that had an amazing voice didn't get through. And then Vera, who sang Hang Out the Washing on the C3 line, gets through to the, to the you know, <laughs> route. And, and you just, the show has no creditation for people that can sing. Because when you go on there, you get mocked, you yeah. know, by somebody. This year, they've kind of, they, they've got the right idea. They've got the right idea because they're trying really hard to get good singers. Yes, some of them might be headhunted. We know this. It's obvious some of them have been headhunted. What the best thing to do is Google that name of that band or that name of that singer as they're going along. And you'll find that that person, I did it last year and I found that a few of them that had already had record deals. Yeah. It's five people that have a record deal because you're trying to make it in the business and some people, I got offered a record deal when I was like 20 and I turned it down because I wasn't I wasn't ready for it. I didn't want a record deal. I just wanted to see. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think the show's got it right and it's, it's nice to see some good talent but we'll see who gets through and how many Joe Cats get through to the live show. You know, I just think that, you know, it is annoying for people watching it, but I can understand why they're doing it. They're out there looking for to put them on the show. It's about time that they had some really, really good singers making it all the way. Yeah. Instead of putting a couple of Joe Tacks in every, every here and there. Cause, you know, it's like Wagner, you know, Wagner or whatever his name was when he was on it. So, I, I don't get that. You know, you could have replaced him with someone that had a really good voice and that person could have made it in the industry within the next I guess, though, we have to remember it is an entertainment programme and it's there to get ratings, not to make stars, I suppose. That's one thing I'll always remember from the moment I went on to that show that it's a TV show before it's a talent competition. Yeah. You, you, one of the reasons we fell in love with you was your genuine passion for your job at the prison and the people that you work with and the job you did. Has there ever been a point where you've thought, I, I could go back to that, even if it's just a day a week, part time, or is that in the past now? Um, well, I, I don't think due to conflict of interest, I don't think I'd ever go back to be a prison officer because obviously the prisoners probably know a little bit too much about me. So yes. Involved in 
motivational speaker and talk about how you can change your life and how you can, you know, how, how dreams can come true. So if there's something that you want to do, then you can achieve it. I think the greatest compliment I can pay you is that you're one of us. You come across that you're very real and that you sing like a bird and that you just give 100%. And the British public do like that. I think that affection is what's carried you through and will continue to have an amazing career. Yeah, well, I can, I can have a laugh as well. And I'm, 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 I'm always one to take the mickey out of myself and, and have a bit of a giggle along the, along the way. So I'm not all completely serious and stuff. And, and people that know me, you know, I don't drink alcohol, but, you know, I can go out and have a good time and, and just be, you know, a normal person like everybody else. And I'm very approachable. So, you know, anybody anybody out there that, you know, listens to this or, or reads or, or read about this, come and say hi, because I am an approachable person and, you know, and that's all I wanted to be is just, you know, in the public eye and just being inspirational to people because there's so so many women out there that have got children that literally completely shot their their dreams down because they've got children and they don't think they can do it and I'm living proof that you can do both you just need to have support around you and that willpower to take one more you know one last go and you never know what can happen Exactly. And uh, you mentioned earlier about being delicious. You are uh, a sex symbol, as we know. Many men fawn over you. Uh, How much work is that? Is that a pain in the ass to have to get up in the morning and put the slap on and stay slim and all that business? Or don't you worry about it? Um, Yeah, I would never say that I'm I'm delicious. uh, Oh, I think so. Oh, no, no, no. Um, I I I I tend to take the mickey out of myself quite a bit. If I do any photo shoots and stuff like that, I tend to sort of like take the mic, and but it, when the photos come out, it actually looks like I'm being serious, but I'm generally not. Um, okay. I don't really get a lot of marriage proposals or anything like that, but um, I'm, I'm still massively, massively self-conscious, um, stupidly self-conscious. Like you want to see, but you name me one woman that isn't, you know. And, I think my confidence flares up when I'm on stage because singing takes over. Yeah. Um, so I would I would say like when when people sort of say say something like oh my god you're gorgeous or I get any blokes saying it I'm like I'll oh, stop it don't be having a laugh you need to go to spectate what you're on about. Yes. So I, I don't really take confidence like that very well because. I've never seen myself as being a bit of a sexist. Well, you should embrace it. And the house, of course. We saw you uh, on that Keith Lemon thing, and you live in a beautifully humble house like yourself, uh, just beautifully humble. Uh, Any ideas to move, or are you staying where you are? Well, if you have a look on the internet, uh, on Twitter, I've actually posted some new pictures because the house has been extended, and I want to make sure that the I'm very excited. I have a downstairs toilet. I have a downstairs <laughs> shower. And the pierce de la resistance for me is I have a hot water tap. So I can have that cup of tea. I've got my very own little mini tea urn in the kitchen. So whenever I want a cup of tea, I don't have to say I'm going to get the kettle on. I can just pour it. Um, so, yeah, um, I always wanted to get it. I never wanted to move. My kids love where they live. One thing I wanted to give them was their normality so that they can still carry on living exactly the same life as what they actually bought. They've just got a few more things in their life, like laptops and stuff like that. So they're well looked after kids. But to stay at, stay at the same school and live in the same little culture that we live in is just giving them their little bit of normality. If we'd have moved, it would have been to them yeah. that they would have had to start again and in their different life. This way, they carried on and stayed as normal as they are and um yeah we've 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 got a bigger house now but it's just still the same house so yeah. um which is kind of why i went in for the show in the first place so i could afford to get an extension and literally finished last week and we've been starting to put photos off and i've got i've got an island in my kitchen and granite worked on so i don't think i've ever been so excited about sitting at a breakfast bar eating my breakfast in the morning so how oh, fabulous little Without the help of the general public, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have come about, so I'm very grateful. You know.
Well, if nothing else, I've found one reason to thank Simon Cowell for. That's that you've got granite worktops. How marvellous. Granite worktops and a downstairs toilet. Very happy. Thank you, Simon. I'm seeing you on Saturday night, Italia. I can't wait. Let's meet up in the next few weeks and do a proper chat uh, face to face. I, I, I love you so much. Your voice is incredible and you're such a genuine talent. And uh, thank you for uh, the music because it is tremendous. I'll see you Saturday night at Aaliyah in Nottingham. It's Saturday and I might give you a little glimpse, a little, a little play on my phone of my new single if you're, uh, if you're about. I'll let you have a listen. Oh, I'd love to. And show me your granite work tops as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a euphemism, by the way. Sam Bailey, great to talk to you. Take care. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Sam. That was beautiful. Thank you very much.